Magic is ubiquitous to most D&D settings, both homebrew and published. It helps practitioners enact their will on the world, commune with spirits and divinity, defend themselves and attack others, all for better or worse. One concept that I like to toy with is the idea of magical radiation. Exempli gratia, magical energies that burn for too long or become stale by any other means begin to poison the world and creatures nearby. Welcome to episode 6 of Table Technician. This time we'll be going over magical mutations and how they can be handled. Long story short, I have a substance in my setting that allows for great magical creations to be made with it, with the one catch being that long-term storage requires it to be constantly pumped with electricity, at risk of becoming unstable and generating mage burn, a phenomena which, for lack of a better term, fries the shit out of you and your spirit. But maybe you're looking to introduce a more, shall we say, playable magical radiation effect? For that, we turn to mutations. Mutations are a fun way to add unexpected, tangential effects to your world. Sure, you've seen orcs, but have you seen orcs that live too close to that mysterious pool of supposed god's blood? Now they all have four arms and rocky skin. You may be familiar with the goblin miners of Ganoa, but are you aware of the ones in the low depths that were exposed to dark magic left over from an ancient battle between necromancers? Yeah, they can walk through walls, but their flesh is incredibly loose and often falls off their bones from the slightest movements. Ew! Mechanically speaking, I like to treat magical mutations like any other disease by breaking it up into three stages, the first stage being contact. This is where the subject is first exposed to the mutative element. This can be whatever you want, but it should be followed with a save to stave off getting boned. The save can be affected by many things, such as protective gear, magical shields, alchemical agents, you name it. Just roll up a con save against the DC of whatever you're dealing with and call it good. Deciding the source can be entirely up to you. Maybe the corpse of an astral dragon is rotting away in a lake, giving off exit and amounts of magical radiation. Maybe an automaton your players fought went into a core meltdown shortly after they left the dungeon, mutating the denizens of the crypt and bringing forth a new problem for them to solve. It's all up to you, just as long as the players can make a save and all that jazz. Stage 2 is where the fun begins. Should the subject have failed their save, they enter into a timed period, where they only have so long to cure themselves before mutation officially takes hold. This period can be different in length, depending on the severity of the radiation, but it's wise to represent this period to your players with obvious tells. This tell could be a cough that gets worse the closer to the event horizon you get, or it could be boils developing on the neck. Get gross with it, if the magics are especially heinous. Don't be afraid to tack on small debuffs in this period, like small amounts of extra damage or stunted regeneration. Stage 3 is full mutation. Whatever effect of the magical radiation you had planned begins to truly manifest now. To give some gravity to the effect, these should only be curable by greater restoration or wish, but of course that's up to you. Go wild with these effects. Maybe it could just be as simple as blindness, but perhaps you want to go as far as to make the mutation something like having skin that crystallizes in direct moonlight or something like that. Mutation can be beneficial as well, rather than just neutral or detrimental. But it should be stated that it's wise to add detriments for every positive effect you add. Example, say your mutation grants you a 1d8 damage bonus to unarmed attacks thanks to your super hardened magma covered hands. Unfortunately, this means that you deal a small amount of damage to anyone you come in physical contact with. There can be other side effects too, but that's just off the top of my head for now. Maybe you sprout an extra arm that allows you to ignore the reloading property of crossbows or gives you one extra dagger attack per round. Unfortunately, you now have disadvantage on charisma checks for most creatures because most people don't like the side of the arm and disadvantage on initiative checks because you have to wrestle with the arm every time it gets the idea that it's about to fight. You get the idea. Balancing these can be tricky, so make sure you plan your benefits and detriments ahead of time, as this sort of thing can be quite a pain in the ass to do when on the fly. That sums up the blunt work of how I do magical mutations in my games, but as usual, you can always expand on it. Maybe you want to add a new damage type, dealt by sources of magical radiation. Some creatures can be resistant to this damage type, including some races, like Purple Dragonborn. You can also reflavor some spells or magical traps to deal this damage as well. Another idea that I quite like is adding a rad score that functions much like sanity would. It begins at zero, but each time you take radiation damage, you roll a constitution save equaling 10 or the damage taken, whichever is lower. Each failed save gives you one rad point. At 10 points, you take a minor debuff. At 15, you take a minor mutation. And at 20 points, you take a greater mutation. Don't think I need to state all the applications this could have. It fits really well into post-apocalyptic fantasy campaigns, obviously, but you could use it anywhere you feel the need to. Perhaps you only want to keep it around for one story line. Up to you. That being said, magical radiation and mutations provide a sort of more controlled version of wild magic for you to use in your games. They can also deepen your world a bit by showing a different side to magic. 
I hope you all got a little inspiration with this video. It was made possible by my lovely supporters over on Patreon. Pledging is two bucks a month, and you get all sorts of goodies, so give it a thought. I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.